Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. We are talking Chicago Bulls basketball. Finally, Tim, we get to talk about these Bulls. And let's face Bulls it. You pulse. Know, dude, Bulls Pulse. Handful of games in. I, I can't tell you, Tim, how much different this Bulls team under Billy Donovan looks than it did last year under Jim Boylan. Oh, gosh. Tim, talk to me, man. Talk to us. What have you seen I'm gonna, so, about the Bulls? Like we talked about, I'm going to give a little bit of an overview, and then I'll throw you more what's going on in depth. But obviously, the coach is mattering. It's matter. The coach is a big deal. Mm-hmm. The of it is actually noticing what players we have. He's seen the personnel. He's using them in the right ways. He's playing the players' strengths. He's able to hit the buttons and relate to the younger players, which is awesome. And in that, he's able to stabilize the younger players by using the veterans. And there are many in different ways. But first, I kind of want to go over, you know, we had those early games with Atlanta and Milwaukee where, you know, that first game, we got run off the floor, 83 points in the first half, giving up our defense looked awful. We weren't switching. We were slow. You put it, players were being put into question, Wendell Carter. What, what, he just didn't have any confidence. He was a disaster in that game. And then they started to play a little better. They had a couple good games against Washington. They had 34. And then the inconsistencies came in where they played the Bucks, 20 assists, 19 turnovers, um, just a lot of trouble in the paint. The, the Bucks dominated them below, down low. You started seeing that same ISO ball again. So they went back to their bag of tricks when they were down that they did last year. And then we go on the West Coast trip, and some like we were saying, this West Coast trip looks like a, the 29, 2009 Bulls. This is mm-hmm. some of the best ball we paid and played in 10 years. We're we're really we're looking good, and it all started with the Portland game. Mm-hmm. Coming back from twenty points down, Zach Levine was a star. They had seven people in double figures in that game. They were able to share the ball. You were seeing a beginning of defensive rotations. You know the drop down defense. They were making switches though. Things were really happening, and the offense we talked about, and you'll talk more about, but. Levine was really rounding. I mean, he made that huge three to go up four in the final minute. I mean, the final, like, 15 seconds. It was huge. And in that, you saw Billy finally starting to use our veterans and Mm -hmm. finding out this is another reason why the coach is awesome. He's he's finding out how the team works. And then we hit with the world champions, dude. I mean, go toe-to-toe. Wendell Carter started improving. We saw his confidence go back up. He had 17 rebounds against the Kings, 23 and 7 against the Lakers. It was so great. He was just constantly picking up garbage points. Um, Levine, he missed that final shot of 38 points, just awesome. And then that traveled into Clippers game. Levine was going back and forth, looking like a star. A star score. He had 45 points in that game. We were mm-hmm. holding them toe to toe the whole time. We were shooting 61% too. So that's a huge difference from last year. We couldn't really shoot the three ball last year. And then that's where the veterans started going again. 32 points for Young. 32 points between Temple and Young. And then, you know, it sucked against the Thunder. But we showed in the first half that we actually can be dominant. And that carried over to the Mavs game where we found different ways to win. Zach Levine, mm-hmm. 10 assists for the first time since his rookie year. He's had six assists in six plus assists in four, uh, six games in a row. This is huge. Mm-hmm. And Lori came back, had a 29 and 10 game last game against the Mavs. He's averaging 20 plus points in three of his six games since returning from injury. The Bulls went from bottom two, bottom three in the league in offensive, in offensive efficiency. Now they're at 13. And then they're mm-hmm. shooting the ball six best in NBA, and they're constantly getting people on screens and throwing them across the. They're making good shots, and that's such a positive thing moving forward. Mm-hmm. If you get the ball open, and you miss these shots. It doesn't matter because they're eventually going to go in. Mm-hmm. So dude, that's the positives. I want. I want to hear like what's working though in the technicalities. 
Yeah, but really, really quickly, I you know, you yeah. mentioned Garrett Temple. What a yeah. pickup he's been for Karnasovas, huh? Journeyman guy. He's he's done, he's been the 10-day contract guy. He's been yeah. in and out of the G League to the NBA, and he's he's just put up solid minutes. And talking about the Dallas game, the great thing that uh, one of the great things that Garrett Temple did in that game mm-hmm. was how well he ran the fast break. How yeah. well he ran that fast break. He was fantastic there um and in addition to being able to find some of the bigs i mean you there there were times where he had the ball taking it to the hoop finds it finds an open big cutting to the basket easy two points the thing yep. that is great and that's what's great about billy donovan's offense tim is that they're taking more advantage of the high pick and rolls so yep. what you're seeing is you're seeing guys like Lori, you're seeing guys like wendell Guys like Daniel Gafford, you're seeing these guys crashing down into the hoop once they make that pick and roll. And you're getting these guys with you're getting these guys the ball around the hoop, giving them easy shots, which is what you want. Contrast that with last year where you had guys like Laurie Markin and out in the perimeter. You had guys like Wendell out in the perimeter. They weren't really being used correctly and this goes back to the coaching tim i mean the fact that billy donovan said you know what wendell we're not going to have you shoot that three ball as much laurie's a great three-point shooter and he really displayed that against dallas so he still has him out there but he got those three points eight eight times but but the fact but the fact that those bigs are crashing to the hoop and the fact that they're getting fouls that way, the fact that they're getting yeah. the free throw line, what you're seeing is you're seeing Wendell, you're seeing Laurie, you're seeing Gafford get the ball around by the elbow, and you're seeing them be a facilitator there. The other thing that I really like about that high pick and roll is that when you get that action that comes around the screen and the play's still not there, the handoff is for another playmaker. So you get that handoff, that handoff either goes to Levine, Kobe White, or Garrett Temple, who could yeah. then maybe take the ball to the hoop and kick it out out to the open guy in the baseline for an open three. These are the things yeah. that these guys that you're seeing the Bulls offense do that you didn't see last year. Last well, year last it was year about we saw Otto Porter being the guy who's the offense stalls because you're not getting the open three or something happens in the pick and roll and you're getting the Otto Porter is the one who's have to play isolation basketball and he's losing the ball over and over again. It was yeah. just the personnel wasn't used well. Yeah, uh, yeah, Otto Porter's definitely more of a guy that's got to maybe come around a screen and catch the ball and shoot an open three. He's great at that. But the thing that also Billy Donovan did, especially in the Dallas game, was he ran like a two-person game with the bigs. He would run like Otto Porter and like Wendell, and they would be running this pick and roll, which actually left Otto Porter open for a lot of easy shots around the free throw line. It was actually quite nice. You saw, you saw Porter had a little floater. He put that one up a couple of times. It's great to see Billy Donovan sort of mix it up. You could see these play calls. You could see an actual offense. You could see players moving the ball. There's mud. You know what, Tim, we spoke earlier about the bulls and we thought, and I asked, the question, how much, how frustrating is it going to be to see Zach Levine dribble up the, dribble up the court, nobody else touch the ball, he puts up a shot. Kobe White, you see Kobe White do that. Sometimes he'll dribble it for 16 seconds and then he'll shoot the ball. You're seeing less of that here with this offense. And what was great about the Dallas game in particular, Kobe White was zero for five field goals, zero points. Zach Levine, 10 points only 10 10 points for those two. Yes. But they beat Dallas by 16 on the road. So you're looking at finding different ways to win 61 points off the bench. Like this is Donovan's almost genius here. Yes. You see guys are touching the ball. You're seeing a lot more action with guys rotating, with guys setting screens, with guys, uh, you know, taking it to the hoop, maybe kicking it out. You're seeing, you're seeing such a variance in the, in the Billy Donovan offense that you did not see in the Jim Boylan offense. The Jim Boylan offense, was it was, it was basically iso ball. It was basically maybe set one screen, isolate, and that's it. I mean, it was, 
it, it's it's like night and day to me. And not only did Jim Boylan do that, he used all the wrong guys to do that. Yep. You know, yep, here, exactly. here, here, whenever they run a certain action, whenever they run a certain action and that action and the defense does a good job, well, then there's another action that happens. You know, when we talk about that pick and roll, it's not there. Then now we're going to hand off to one of our playmakers and I'm we're not seeing handing double it off. pick and rolls too. Yes. Yes. You're saying I double pick that. and rolls. Yes. That's when they run that Iverson screen around. Yes. 100%. You're just seeing far more action uh, and far more movement with this bulls offense. And we've, that we're accustomed to Tim. I don't know what this is. It's great. It's great. And that's why you're seeing efficient shooting. That's why you're seeing guys making threes. That's why you're seeing guys getting easy layups around the basket. And that's why they're, that's why they're one of the most efficient scoring teams in the NBA. Now. I mean, they're, you said they're 13th, but I think in the last six or seven games, they're like sixth, fifth or sixth, right? They're yeah, with, I think they are. And they also, I saw their yeah. sixth in shooting percentage. Sixth in sho- shooting percentage. They're, they, I mean, this is the same Bulls team that we pretty much had last year, Tim. What, what's going on? Well, it's, it's, it's awesome. great. 